and um, we were beta freaks. And that, that was our, our, our genesis. And um, started listening to country. There was this one bar uh, called the Lone Star, and I had many a transcendent night in there listening to you know, country bands. It was a fantastic bar. And that affected our songwriting. And when we got back to Toronto, we had a better focus on a group of songs that would translate to an audience live, and we hoped that would be recorded. Because that was the goal all the time. We took demo tapes around New York all the time. And, and we would just leave them with the secretaries. We put these fancy packages together, you know, as much as you could on a low budget in New York just yourself. But we'd, we'd, we'd pass the tapes around every time and always get rejection letters. We have a nice stack of re rejection letters that we still have. And, uh, but I think, you know, from almost the first rehearsal with Bobby, it felt like this is something that will take us into a studio and get us on the radio. We differ there, fact check. <laughs> I, I, I didn't. I thought that Blue Rodeo was going to be a bar band, and I was really happy about that. But I never thought. I thought that among us all. So in those days, that was the the, the, the mid '80s, the late '80s. There was a whole scene on Queen Street, and uh, there was a whole bunch of bands that were kind of a little bit of foot in country, a little bit of great guitar playing, great playing, and everyone. Nobody thought they were ever going to get signed because no bands like us ever got signed, except for Handsome Ned. Handsome Ned was the center of the scene. He was the craziest cowboy guy, and he thought that he was destined for stardom. And I thought it was a joke. I thought, none of us are. We're going to be here for forever. Better get used to it. And we loved it. I loved it. I loved not having to deal with that. So maybe we differed. Like my, <clears throat> my aspirations were just to, to play the bar band and and write songs. We were all original. We didn't play covers. We played a few covers, just for fun. And uh, it just seemed perfect. It just seemed, well, like, here's $100 and a bunch of beer, and <laughs> that was a great night. People were all over. So, it's still $100. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, it's still good, but just not like for me, the, the song is like the, how to get into the studio. Like, I just love being in the studio. And I, I, I was quite eager to you know, make records. I don't know that about you. <laughs> <laughs> These are good interviews. You find out a lot of stuff about each other. I'm glad we've been so revealing and you're sharing so much. I appreciate your honesty and candor, sirs. Um, 